People often wonder what New York City would be like without cars. As a person that prefers to use a bike as means of transportation, this seems like a dream. Each year in New York City, there's one such day without cars. I decided to film some of my experiences on this day and share them with you guys. This video will be more focused on the conversations and interactions I had during the ride. It might give you a glimpse into how different things might be without the noise and the threat of being run over. Okay, so we're starting out here this morning. My shop got here around 6 a.m. and we're gonna go ride the Five Borough Bike Tour. We have an 810 start and we'll do the 40 miles around the city. We got this kind of unique camera set up. So this is my bike, I have four different cameras on here. To be frank, I also wanted to share more of the sights, but my multi-camera setup didn't work quite as well as I had planned. I'll just kind of talk through it. We'll be meeting up with some friends. Yeah, just enjoy the ride. So, all right, into it. Maybe I have a muscle that's this is likely the largest group of people I had been with since the start of COVID, and it was nice to feel that energy. I met up with a few friends at the start, and right off the bat, had a quick conversation with some folks on a tandem. Have you done the tour before? Or this is the first time. We like to go somewhere fun, you know, every year. Yeah. And you got the tandem. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Nobody feels held back or feels yeah. left behind. Yes. I really do love tandems. I was a little concerned that someone might try to stop me as I didn't get any approval to film this way. All right. Look at this. That's a show in itself. Yes. Well, I didn't get any complaints. Seemed to go through all the people that would potentially give me a hard time about this. I talked to my friend Peter about the logistics of getting to the ride. Some just ride, some use a car, some fly and rent bikes, and many use the Staten Island Ferry, which is one of the little known gems in New York. It's a great way to see the Statue of Liberty for free. So you left, you left at five, drove into Staten Island, parked the, car. parked the car and took the ferry over. So now you got the car ready to go when we stop in Staten Island. I think some people might be intimidated on the idea of riding 40 miles. I think most would be surprised how easy it was, even without electric assist like we had. So Peter, what are some of your fond memories of, of, of riding this in the past? Just the excitement of being right around all these people riding. Yeah. yeah. Just enjoying you really, you have a lot of energy, right? Like, I mean, that's one thing. People hear 40 miles, and I think sometimes that, that might feel like a lot. I mean, I know you're on an electric bike today, but, but just in general, I think people riding non-electric bikes. Too yeah. crazy. All different age groups. And you'll get different, you look around at the different bikes that are out there. I do imagine my dad wouldn't have joined us if he didn't have assist, though. It was really nice to have this ride with him, despite the struggles he's had with his health. Fortunately, it's been improving a lot. It reminds me of when me and my dad used to go play basketball together. Fishing was the big thing that I did with my dad. And there, there he is now. <laughs> He's racing ahead. Doesn't know how to go slow. But not on a recent meal. Huh? You, gotta, you gotta learn to go slow. We were talking about different things that, that people do with their dads. I said that, you know, we used to go fishing a lot. This is one of the coolest things I've done. We actually work together, but we don't usually get the opportunity to ride like this. It's definitely been one of the more memorable experiences we've had together. I realize the importance of these small moments together. I have to remember, as busy as I get with work, how important it is to spend time with friends and family. Our time here is so limited, and tomorrow isn't promised. We crossed several bridges, rode on highways, and I had the privilege of meeting many amazing people along the way. The energy of 30 plus thousand riders and supporters was quite uplifting but I was really motivated by the small interactions I had with others. Whether it was a smile, a short conversation, or some even longer ones. As I've shared before, these connections are possible and I really hope that others have the opportunity to experience them. I like to call this one of the hidden benefits of biking, especially all the diverse riders. There were so many different bikes out there. Road bikes, tandem, recumbents, adaptable bikes, cruiser bikes, you name it. Out on the womb bikes, that's pretty cool. 
I had some technical difficulties throughout the ride. I have the cameras plugged into this power supply and it's like losing the connection. Oh, also I got a coffee cup. Drink some coffee. Okay, I think I got the cameras working again. I was getting some cutout issue. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut out here, watch Raul. Ooh. There we go, and we're back on it. Had a conversation with Raul comparing California and New York bike infrastructure and how we could potentially improve that. This is what I envisioned how New York would be. There's a lot of bikers. I should note that I never met Raul before this day. We met through YouTube when I invited others to join us on the ride and I'm glad that he did. But I was really inspired by this one thing we talked about always focusing on where we're going instead of just being where we're at. So they make all this space available to pedestrians and makes things quieter, more peaceful, more enjoyable, allows you to just be there. Yeah, I mean, maybe that's the other thing that people are starting to evaluate. What are we in a rush for? Where, where are we trying to go? Because the reality is the future is not really promised to us. So. Personally, that's what happened to me during 2020, is that self-reflection internally of like, why am I in a rush and why I only had one life and I was always in a rush. Yeah. Times when I needed to be with people, I could have taken it slower. Perhaps that's what's great about biking. We can enjoy our surroundings while getting to where we need to go. I've heard that's the best way to enjoy life. Yeah! You like it? All right, all right. Generally, the community is very supportive, and it's really nice to interact with them as you ride along. It's perhaps another one of those hidden benefits of biking, the ability to interact with the community and just hear from people, make eye contact, and have deeper connections. I connected with Chris again. We had previously did a video together with him and we got to chatting closer to where he actually lives in Harlem. Yeah, definitely. At what point do, do we actually get into Harlem, Chris? What, what, what street do we cross into Harlem? I would say 110, 116, one okay. somewhere around there. We're in Harlem. I think you're, you I could feel it. You, could, you could feel when you're in Harlem. Yeah, now you're like in Harlem, Harlem. Chris yeah. is pretty active in the political space, and we spoke a little bit about being involved in that. Yeah, do you do any, like, with, like, the legislation and all that? Yeah, so, um, as far as legislation goes, I think we were pretty heavily involved in it for years, trying to get some legislation passed in New York. I was reminded how I spent a large percentage of my time in the early days of my business advocating for the legalization of electric bikes and just better support for bikes in general. After some notable wins, I took some time away from that, but now I'm starting to explore getting more involved in advocacy work, but perhaps from a different angle. I'm kind of getting back into it, but I think that this is a, a good medium for uh, videos and stuff like that to help advocate for biking, infrastructure, and stuff like that. Help people understand. And also, probably more importantly, one thing that I was talking to Raul about, the organizing, like the, you know, kind of building that community because if you can build a unified force, it's very powerful what, what you can do with that. So I, I think we need more of that and I think people need to to know more about that, you know? I think people don't necessarily know like how these things happen. Like, oh, how did New York get to be a pretty good biking city? How did all this happen? How did these changes come about? And it really came by individuals working together as a community and voting. You know? Riding a bike on the highways was a pretty special experience. I guess it's kind of the road less traveled sort of thing. Not for cars, but certainly by bike. I tell you, it's a totally different experience riding on roads meant for cars on a bike. You can really take things in and have a new experience. Definitely appreciating the uh, pedal assist right now. People are struggling up the hill a little bit. <laughs> so how are you feeling, Dad? I'm Careful there. I'm so excited there. doing this. I have a hard time staying people with you guys. What, well, cause you- Freedom. You like, you like going, you like, no. you like moving. It's not about fast though, it's just the freedom. Just to move about and not... Amazing. Yeah, we're moving right now. I should note that he had a quintuple bypass and he has a pacemaker. But it was really nice to get out there on this ride with him. I highly doubt we'd be able to do it if he didn't have electric assist. So we're gonna, we're gonna roll through the tunnel. Interesting echoes.
somebody getting patched up here. This is a... Uh, we're in the lower level. We seem to be going to the upper level. I don't know. But what, what road are we on right now? Is this FTR? It's FTR. Are we in the Bronx though now? Or? Yeah, I think we're... we're, in, I think we're this is where I lost my memory cards. Sorry for littering. Whatever. 8.8 .8 million people, but the reality is... Well, stop for the horns. Woo! Yeah. We've been talking a lot about this idea that biking helps us connect with our inner child. It helps us feel alive and really experience the world. I can often get caught up in my adult responsibilities and forget to have these experiences. I often reflect on the fact that I lost part of that childhood experience when I experienced some trauma as a child. And that experience was probably even deepened when I went to war at the age of 21. It's experiences like this that I feel like I'm able to relive some of those moments that I missed in my childhood. And I think it's really important that all of us reconnect with that experience. Biking is one of the ways that I do that, but it can be challenging to have the full experience with the threat of cars and other hazards. You have all these millions of people in New York, but you could still feel like it's a small community. Like, because people are outside and you connect with people on the street like all the time. It's like all these little tiny communities of people and sometimes you belong to like multiple communities of people. Yeah. So we're so we're back in Manhattan, huh? So we went we kinda cut into the Bronx for a moment and then Yeah. And, and then, then went back. We're on FTR. Oh, and now I see. Okay, so now we gotta go to Queens and Brooklyn. Right. Looks like a a little bit of a rest stop. Some nice rest stops along the way. Food, drinks, bathrooms, or porta potties at least. And lots of bananas. Plenty of bananas. Lots of live music as well, which is certainly cool. All right. Got the gimbal. That's it, man. Double gimbal. That's it. Never seen that one before. No. <laughs> Love that. So, Dad, how are you feeling so far? How many miles we went so far, Chris? 14? Something like Almost that? 15. 15? We probably went about 17 because we started two miles, something like that. So You're fine. You're fine. I asked him how he's doing. He tells me how his battery's doing. I don't know. <laughs> he's like, ah, oh, my half heart is fine with my battery. Dad, what do you have? A quintuple bypass? What do I have? Quintuple. How many? Quintuple? How many is that? Five. Five? Wow. All right, everybody's uh, stopping for photos. A little break. Riding the bridges was pretty epic. I realize I talk about bike infrastructure a lot. I hope it's not annoying. It's so nice to experience it, and I would love everyone to have that ability. We don't realize how we've been trapped in this built environment that was prescribed to us. So this is definitely uh, a perspective you don't get too often. Yeah. Being on this. I'm enjoying yeah. every moment. Oh. Pretty sweet, huh? Yeah. This is crazy, crazy. How was that? Good? Oh, wild. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <Hi. laughs> Thank you. Another nice rest stop. We actually stopped this time. Little quick bathroom break. It's fun. This is uh, some of the finer moments in uh, bike tours. Check it out. Good rest stop. All right, you guys don't care too much about this. It's good to know that they exist, though. Are you having a good time? All right, that makes me happy. I want to pace myself in this, and I'm trying to keep keep going. Big yeah. ride. Big ride. For old men. You're having fun. I'm having Feeling good. Fun. How's your heart doing? My heart's sticking. Beating good. How, how old do you feel today? Fifteen. All right. Chris saw some friends. He seems to know everyone. So this is Queens. Not sure the exact area of Queens, but I think that, I think that it's Astoria. I had a fun discussion about arepas. If you never had one, I highly recommend it. Go arepas. Yay, the arepa riders. What's, what's, what's the best topping for arepas or just oh, plain? Depends, so you know, my what's favorite. your favorite? My favorite is carne michada. 
and Reina Pepeada. It's like you can't cut an entire studio in your bike. That's it, that's it. We're trying to show the experience and also show the experience of biking that when you bike, you connect with people. Yes, exactly. You do, it's different than you know driving a car or something yes. like that where you're so separate from people. And, and you see, this should, we should have more bikes. We should have more, more safe roads for bikes. Yeah. It seems that most people I meet on bikes would love to have safer infrastructure. But I was really impressed by these young guys' thoughts on the topic. I was really impressed by their feelings on transportation and how they're rejecting this idea that many Americans are raised with having a dream of one day owning a car. For them, their dream or their hope, it seems, is to live in a city where they're not dependent on a car. Cool, what do you think so far? Awesome. It's nice, it's nice to not have to compete with cars. Yeah, do you guys live in New York or? Yeah. yeah. What do you think? Do you think there's a, a future in the city that will have a lot less cars and, and more bikes? I mean, I hope so, but I don't know if the city has been proactive enough in that sense. Of like so the, the city needs to support it with, with different policies and infrastructure and that sort of thing. To yeah, be, I think we need more bike lanes that need to be separated, actually protected. You know, the protected bike lanes, that's pretty critical, right? right. Where like it's like, cars not parked in the bike lanes, but also help Yeah. How big of a deal do you think bike storage is? Like bike parking. If you look at a place like Amsterdam, like yeah. the train station, they have a lot of bike parking. So I can, I'm pretty sure that's going to be important if you want people to take, take bikes to the station or otherwise. Yeah. So things like that would be very important. But there's, you need to like actually have indoor space for that. Yeah, I think there's a lot of concern about theft. And right. so bike is pretty good for like multimodal commutes, but it's still limited capacity for, for a shower. So you guys seem to be pretty well educated on the topic of uh, mobility and things like that. Are you studying that or? Uh, no, not really. I just, we just uh, both care about. You care about it. Get places. And do you feel like your generation is this something that's more important to you? Transportation, sustainable things like that. I think just access to things without having to drive is really a big push for a lot of people. Okay. I know. I prefer like modes of transportation that are a bit more spontaneous. I mean like this interaction for example, right? Spontaneous and these things can happen, you know, biking, walking, on a train, but maybe not necessarily, you know, uh, in a car. Yeah, driving right. also kind of breaks up community because you can't really spend time around other people. You go from place to place. So this interaction I had with them gives me a lot of hope for our future. I don't know, what do you guys think? What's what's the general consensus on here, people that are watching this video? I mean, do you feel like cities should have less and less personal cars and more and more, you know, bikes and other forms of transportation? Do you feel like that makes the city more vibrant and, you know, is beneficial or...? We stopped by my shop to check in on our team. We're usually closed on Sundays, but some team members showed up to assist with the riders for the day. You guys are awesome. Thank you. Thanks for thanks for keeping everybody happy on the road. Thank you so much. So no worries. Ride safe. This is Lynn and, and John, our two of our mechanics, helping uh, keep everybody rolling. Push here. Take care, buddy. We'll see you soon. This is Navy Yard, Fort Green area. We're gonna ride into uh, Dumbo. Dumbo. Brandon. I told you, Chris knows everyone. He was on the basketball team. Chris knows everybody. What, what's up this, Chris? <laughs> he was on the basketball team. Get down team. with you, man. I, I don't need to network. He's I just hang out with Chris, team. and he just introduced me to everybody. <laughs> I guess this gets back into going out there and doing stuff and meeting people and all that sort of thing. Yeah, what? You guys are twinning. We're twinning. Oh, do you love it? I love me it. Me too. <laughs> it's great to be able to contribute to getting more people on bikes and seeing our customers on bikes throughout the ride was really affirming to me. Yeah, I got like my mom who lives in Maryland, I got her a bike like I remember this ago. story. I'm just I'm trying to remember that I we might we might have spoken but nice bikes guys. Love them. I see you like no channel at all. Yeah? Yeah. The first time I see you like I saw you like, you brag about your cameras. I think you just got all those cameras. I did, yeah. <laughs> Hello. Good yeah, how's it going? Yeah, sweet. It seems we connected with many people right after passing by my shop, which is cool. 
It's a really interesting experience meeting people that watch our videos and learning what they mean to them. I really enjoyed meeting some new friends from New Jersey and hearing about how they use their bikes daily as a break from being stuck at home all day. Yeah, after we get the bike, I actually call your bike almost 20 miles every day. Especially hear from those who might not otherwise get out on a bike too much. What, what's your favorite thing about biking? Yeah. It's been a really nice experience doing this ride. I think we're we're at the final stint here, going over the Verrantano Bridge, and then we get into Staten Island, and it pretty much ends like not too far after you get over to the other side of the bridge. Lots of people at this point end up, you know, pushing their bikes and stuff like that, which. I certainly respect. I mean, well, part of that is some people don't necessarily know how to use gears. I've seen that a lot. But some of it is people might just be kind of spent at this time, which is totally respectable and understandable as well. Chris, what do you think, man? Home stretch. Yay! <laughs> that was fast. Chris and I continued the conversation that we often have about what the city would be like with less cars and maybe how we're going to get there. I'm not sure how well this other camera is capturing this, but it's pretty epic over there. Supposedly, they're supposed to put a bike lane, so people contact your Congress people and uh, elected officials. Tell them we want a bike lane on the Baranzano Bridge. Yeah, this would be a, this would be like a destination. Oh yeah, I mean, look at this is beautiful over here. It'd be so nice to be able to pop over, and it'll also create perhaps more paths to go outside of New York. No toll for bikes. No, there's a toll for, for cars. These kind of remote toll systems, I mean, I anticipate that this is probably what they're gonna end up using in Manhattan for the congestion pricing. Yes. So when you cross 60th Street, that you'll effectively pay a toll. I think, I think in London they might've said it was like about 20% a decrease in traffic as a result. Oh, well then that means you just really improved a, a lot of That's pretty dramatic, lives. right? Yeah, so 20% dramatic. decrease in traffic, then a lot of additional revenue for the city as well, right? Well, I was told by, what's his name in San Francisco, the MTA director there, that you only need like to lower traffic by like 10% of the drivers off the road to improve everyone's life in terms of, you know, yeah. making traffic move again. Well, and it's, it's what, what traffic specifically would be removed, right? It's like the leisure trips, would it be maybe people that are running in and out of the city multiple times per day, they might reconsider the way they do things and it's like that that alone could be a pretty dramatic. You get that road user to reconsider the way that they yeah. they travel. Maybe they take a train or for some of that or a yeah. bus for some of that. What do, what oh. do you guys think? Crossing through the end here. Pretty sweet. A lot of fun. Welcome to the Finish Line Festival. All right. I love it. I love it. Congratulations, guys. Welcome back.